All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you for coming. This is the second and what will be a continuing series of uh, Lunch and Learns about uh, accessibility. I'm Kate Dybel, the systems librarian here at uh, on the Philly campus. And today we're talking about Microsoft Office and accessibility. So last time, if you, oh, and for those who are curious, the very silly looking black and white cat there with the crossed eyes and sticking her cute little pink tongue out, that is Fiona, my kitty, who um, I figured like while people were waiting, they could at least have fun staring at a very silly picture of her. So, so last time we talked about, uh, you know, making documents accessible just in the general case. So, you know, we talked about, you know, like we need to have good choices in typography using headings, alternative text for images, table headers, and all these. But the question is though, how do we actually do this? So now we're getting into the more details of how to make documents accessible. So, but of course you're wondering though, well, exactly how do we do this? How do we do it in Word? How do we do it in PowerPoint? How do we do it in Google Docs? You know, how do we do it with PDF? So first of all, I just wanna get into why I am starting off with Microsoft Office. So why not PDFs is because making a PDF accessible is actually a very advanced topic. PDFs are far more complex as a document format and require actually quite a bit of expertise and specialized tools to make accessible. It's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of them. Um, a lot of times when I am making a PDF accessible, I am using anywhere from two to three separate programs to help do that. And that's not even my testing software for it. As for Google Docs and slides, what you're gonna see is that Microsoft Office has some amazing built-in tools for supporting accessibility. They've been doing a ton over the last several years. Microsoft does not tout how much they have done in terms of disability support, but they should be very commended for what they have worked on. Google Docs and slides and sheets just don't go as far and they just don't have as many options. Plus as it generally my experience has been is, is that when I have talked with people with various disabilities, screen reader users, they often prefer Microsoft Office over the Google equivalents. So, but the big thing though is this built-in accessibility checker. Microsoft Office products, so Word, PowerPoint, Excel, even Publisher and to some degree OneNote have this tool in them that will basically guide you through on how to improve accessibility in your document. So there, I, I have a screenshot of it up here where it's just focusing on some of it. It forms a complete sidebar. It will talk to you about errors, which are significant things you must address, warnings, and then also give you some tips on like, hey, that's not exactly the most helpful thing there. But what's even better is it will give you an explanation as to why you should fix it. And I'm then also on how to fix. So I'm going to step you through using this, using the tool. It is one of the best accessibility tools out on the market right now. And the fact is it just comes pre-built in. And you know, you're gonna compare, you know, my oh, it's just like spell check. This is so much better than spell check, so, so awesome. Um, so to find it, it can be a little bit tricky. So if you're in a modern version of Office, so I believe from 2019, 365, you have those. So if you're, so right here, I'm on the screen right now, I am showing Office 365 on, online. So this is the web version. And all that you have to do to find the accessibility information is to go to review, and then there's a option to say, check accessibility. And it runs it's right there, it tells you everything. It's a little different in the 365 version. So over here on the sidebar, it creates separate tabs. So there's uh, three drop downs for that are saying uh, for errors that are saying, um, I, I'm missing three object descriptions. I have a total of eight warnings and it breaks it down to say reading order. Then there's also tips and also intelligence services, which 
honestly, I don't know what that is. So I will just mention, you know, I'm a constantly learning. They're constantly improving this. But for example, like on this reading order, which we'll get into later, it says to make the document more accessible for people with disabilities, select and fix the issues below. Additional information. So in this case, they have you linking out. So I'll be honest, I'm not as big of a fan of, of online 365 as I mentioned, but let's actually dive into it and say Office 2016, which I have right here. So 2016 is a little trickier to find. You have to go to the ribbon, click on file. Then there's this area that says inspect uh, presentation and it has check for issues. If you click on that, then you find check accessibility there. A little trickier to find, but it tells you pretty much about the exact same things. So for the alt text, it tells me this information here, why fix it. Alternative text helps readers understand information presented in pictures and other objects. How to fix? We'll tend to say to, we'll tell you explicitly on how to get to the information that you need about it. Plus also a link to more information. So it's all there for you. It's just, it's like having an accessibility librarian, you know, by your side. So it is just an amazingly powerful tool. And we'll actually run through it in a moment. But just to kind of uh, get through this, um, let's just talk a little bit about Office versions. I will say this, that Really, whenever you can, particularly for accessibility, you should be using the most modern version you can, using Word 365, 2019, any of those. And part of that is, is that the improvements they make to the accessibility checker, they don't always get added into the older versions because they only do so much updates with those. And with the newer ones, they can actually detect a lot better, give you better advice. There, the tools and interface for fixing them are so much better. And I'll give an example of that later with reading order. And also what they do behind the scenes to make things work with say a screen reader, the newer ones do a lot better things. So there are certain like things without getting into too technical. So if you've ever had like a floating box or anything in, um, in Word, and it basically, unfortunately, those are generally inaccessible in older versions of Word. However, as of the most recent versions of Word, they actually can be accessed by a stranger. So it's a huge difference, big improvement in fixing things. But I will say there are options if you want to do this in Google Docs, Slides, and Sheets. There's an add-on called Grackle. Um, yeah, Grackle as in pretty much a type of crow raven species, more in like the southern US. It's something that you have to add in. It's relatively free. It does have some advanced features you do have to pay for. But it's one of those things that like, yeah, it's there. But the biggest problem is though, since it's not as integrated, it's more of a hack onto it. So it can definitely improve those documents but it's just not going to be as good as say a Word document versus a Google doc document. So let's just kind of talk about some things here. Let's actually uh, run things here and let's run it on this document. So normally when I am doing um, my presentations, I am doing this along with it. So one of the cool features about the accessibility checker is that it will generally check as you make updates on everything. But it can often like give you all sorts of really helpful things to go on here. So, um, you know, just to kind of get into these. So let's look at the errors. So it's saying missing alt text. And it will tell me where those issues are on the various um, uh, slides. So the first instance is on slide number four. If I click on that, it takes me to slide four. And we'll even auto highlight or, you know, auto select the item that's problematic there. So in this case, I don't have alt text on uh, this uh, screenshot of what the accessibility checker looks like. So 
let's go ahead and take care of it. So now it's going to tell me on how to fix it. To add alternate text, right click on the picture, shape or other objects, and click format. So format picture. It opens up that. And now I have to uh, click size and properties, which is up here. And then there's this little drop down for alt text. And now I have to put things in there. Now, this is a little bit odd in this case, because this is 2016. The alt text editor here offers two fields. There's the title and the description. Ignore, generally you can ignore that title. Title is a weird legacy. Microsoft was trying to be very innovative, but nobody was using it. And most software was not actually bringing it up. But in this, just in the description, I would write something like screenshot of the accessibility checker sidebar in Office 365. So, and once it's there, it's there. And you take a look, you know, we, slide four was listed in the accessibility checker, but it's no longer there because it, I now have alt text in there. And I can do this for all the various things out there. You'll notice that it's not always just sometimes images. So this image here, which is a screenshot of the, uh, of the of the review ribbon with an arrow on it is actually two objects so i will just briefly separate it yeah so i have an arrow there to help highlight it and then i just group the whole thing so even things like groups will have a single alt text to apply to them so you know i can go through this you know keep paying attention to what i need to add so i have two so What's interesting is, is that on this one page right here, I have two images. One of them apparently has the alt text already, which you, which when I look in there, it does say that, but the other one does not. So, you know, it, it works things through. Now, there are some other good examples here in this. It's giving me a warning about unclear hyperlink text. So what does that mean? So let's first take a look at an example of it. So we go to this slide, to, you know, this slide here, and it's saying that the hyperlinks aren't not great. And so if we look at these, these are links. You know, you read them out, and they kind of just tell you these things. I mean, they are kind of wordy. They're not good summary, and these would actually be not a problem for a screen reader user, but to a screen reader user, they would have to hear the entire thing. So when this would run, it would be HTTPS colon slash slash www.crackledocs.com. And then for the other one, it's like all that plus workspace.google.com slash marketplace slash search slash crackle. So that's kind of problematic. And but actually, if you look at the white fix, Hyperlink text should provide a clear description of the link destination uh, instead of providing only the URL. So it's an interesting uh, issue there where it's like going, oh, but you know, if I wanted my audience members to be able to look at this while, uh, while they're in the audience, it's like, hmm, I need to show the full URL. However, if this was, say, in a document that I was handing out to someone, I was going to be giving that, you know, the file to someone, then it could actually just be a link to itself. It could just say Grackle Docs or Grackle Docs in the Google workspace, things like that. So it's giving you there. But now let's run into this fun one here. And this is where we're going to understand the difference between um, uh, Office 2016 versus Office 365, reading order. So what is reading order? So on a slide, a reading order, let's find a good one to work with here. This is a good one to work with. So we have a slide with, uh, you know, we're talking about using heading styles. We have two bullet points and then an image. So what is reading order? Well, reading order refers to how 
you know, in what order will the various elements on the slide be read out loud? If you're using a screen reader, text to speech, how are they, you know, what order are they going to be? So that really, really matters. And they should be in a specific order. Now to fix it, it's kind of weird. So here in the home tab, actually, before I show you on this, let's see on how it looks in in 365 so we have check reading order same slide slide number nine now to fix it here we can look on this accessibility tide side a minute oh sorry i should have checked this i'm used to doing this in my download version but so what matters here is, is in order to do it, it's the same issue, is that we have this selection pane, which is actually the ordering of things from the bottom of the slide to the top. So it's what, if you're in design, it's called Z ordering. And basically what it says is like what appears on top of what. So right now I'm moving this, um, this image and it's superimposed over the top of it. So that just tells you that the image is the topmost item. And if I wanted to, I could do that like send to back or bring to front to just change that order. Now, the issue that's going on here though, is that what is the ordering here? Now, this is where when using the selection pane, this is not fun, is that it's the reading order is backwards. So while this says picture six, slide number, content placeholder, title one, the reality is, is that the reading order is title one, content placeholder, slide number, picture six. So a little bit confusing there. And so if you want to have these things. So in this case, it makes sense that we would want the title to be the first thing read on the page. So that should be at the bottom. Then we have the content placeholder where if you click on it, it will select it for you. So you know what it is. And so that should be next, but then it should be the picture. So we have to rearrange the order for it. You can drag and drop, or you can use these up down tools. And that fixes it there. If you're doing this in um, like a, you know, Office 2019, Office 365, which I only have 2016 and online 365 on this computer, it, there's actually a dedicated reading order tool. So a little bit different. These are just some of the ideas of like what it will do for you there. So that's using that, but there are other things worth just mentioning. So let's dive into the rest of the talk and just talk about various techniques we do. So remember one of the first things that I've always talked about with documents and accessibility is heading structure. Headings are incredibly valuable, but how do you do, but how do you implement them in say a Word doc? Well, in Word, it's fairly straightforward. We need to use styles. So let's take a look at styles right here. I'm gonna open, here's a blank Word document and I can just go, this is a first level heading. Hello, the quick brown fox. You know, so I have some text here. Now, if I wanted to make that, you know, make a heading, some people on how they do it is like this. They will select what they think is the heading, they will make it bold, they will change the font size, and they think they've made a heading. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. That is still just what's considered to be normal text. To make it a heading, you need to select whatever it is that you want to be a heading, go into styles, and in this case, because it's a heading level one, we want to select heading one. Now at this point, you're probably going to be going, oh, that's really ugly looking. I don't like using those, they look horrible. And yes, the default uh, heading styles are horrible. You know, anyone with design background, such as my compatriot Kate Delaney would agree that this is a horrible design. You can edit it. I'm gonna just, you know, show something else real quick. This is, uh, 
This is another first level heading. So we have two of these here. But what I'm going to show you is that you can change these styles. There are a couple of ways of doing it. The most direct way is to end this heading one up here. And this is in 2016, and this works with any of the desktop application. Right click. Yeah. yeah. Right click in heading one, say modify. And you can do restyling up. So we're going to change the color to, we're just going to make it, we're going to make it bright red, bold. We're going to do aerial black and heck, for the heck of it, we're going to make it italics. And so I'm, once I decide everything's correct there, I hit OK. And notice the key thing that it does is though anything that's tagged as a first level heading gets updated to that, to that same style. So it is quite possible to edit these, make them uh, how you want them to look. You can go through and do that. And so these are incredibly powerful. And this is on how you need to do headings in a Word document. And once you start doing it, it becomes a habit. Now you might be wondering, well, what about if I'm doing in PowerPoint? What, what's a heading in PowerPoint? Because it's like, oh, PowerPoint doesn't have a styles field. Well, it doesn't. But that's because um, styles are, are automatically assigned to certain areas. So when you create a new slide and you have that box that says click to add title, that's going to become a heading automatically for you. It will usually each slide will have a heading level two, and there's no concept of an heading level three, heading level four, and so on on a slide. That's just one of the concepts that are kind of built into how a PowerPoint works. And so basically, as long as you put your, you know, something in that title box, that's going to be the heading for that slide. Now, please, what this means is don't like try to put everything in the title slide. I've seen people do this. That's very problematic. It breaks things. It's just does not work like it, you know, people think it would. It's like, yeah, there's a title box and then there is the content box. You put the actual slide contents in the content box. Now, you know, alt text kind of already showed things, but let's at least see what alt text looks like on in Office 365. So I'm going to go up to one of these for alt text is so much easier. So I've right clicked on the on the image here, oh, for some reason it's okay. I'll be honest. I am, and I apologize for this. I am not commonly a um, user of the Web One, but it's like so. If you take an image and you right click on it, you can just get an option that says Alt Text. You click on that, and it's a much, much more simple screenshot. Uh, or you know interface. It's one field. It has a tool in there that might that you can ask it to generate description for you. I'm going to and yeah. So okay, not quite sure why that's not working. Let me try. I'll do this one here. Or um, we'll just like generate a description for it. Yeah. So if you notice here, like the AI generated said graphical user interface text application, it's not very useful. So generally, whenever you use these, you just need to make sure that you know it's actually useful. And also, one thing that you will notice in these more modern versions, there's also a option to mark an image as decorative. So a decorative image is, is literally that. It is only there for decoration. It might be like a horizontal line. It might just be like a frame you put around something. Those are all the things you have there. But there are other things too, like PowerPoint reading order. And there are all sorts of resources out there for it. Microsoft's online resources for making various documents 
accessible are great. The University of Washington has a great resource site there. But that's kind of it there. It's I just wanted to be able to point out that this accessibility checker that is built in to Word, PowerPoint, Excel is an incredibly strong tool. And I encourage anyone to take advantage of it and use it. It's a, a, a very good exercise is to take an older presentation or document and just run it and try to fix it. Um, I know at least one person on this call has uh, done that because I introduced this concept uh, like when I started out. And so it's helpful. And it's one of those where the more you do it, the less you will actually be finding that you have to actually fix it because you've gotten so used to it. Every I and this was actually a hard slide deck for me to make because I intentionally left out alt text and other things that I have learned to do just autom you know, just out of habit. But that's what I encourage everyone to do. And if we and if you're in, still interested in these talks, next week I'm going to be talking about how do you actually write good alt text? What is good alt text? How did I know what I should talk about on the alt text for this image versus other ones? That's, it's not in overall, it's not directly obvious at times what a good alt text is, but I will like give you some tips and everything with that. So uh, next Thursday, May 11th at noon, and that's everything there. I can take some questions, do some demonstrations, everything, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. So thank you all.